Hey everyone, this is David Brown with the Migration Update for April 22nd, 2023 from the Braddock Bay Hawk Watch. I started the day at sunrise at the Braddock Bay East Spit, and it was a cloudy morning, but there was just a little bit of clear sky on the horizon that we actually got to see the sun. There was a light northeast wind, but there was a fair amount of bird activity. Here's the first spotted sandpiper of the season. Here's an osprey pulling a fish out of the bay. And one of the main highlights of the morning were these two red-necked grebes that were together on the bay. And this is a species that I had sort of given up on, figured I wouldn't end up seeing any. And uh, there they were in really nice breeding plumage. I moved over to Braddock Bay Park a bit before 9 a.m. and the fog really started to roll in. And it was really foggy from about 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. But after that, it started to clear up and it actually turned into a pretty nice day. The winds shifted throughout the day, starting with that northeast lake breeze and then shifting east and then southeast and around through south and eventually to southwest. And there were a number of bands of rain that passed through and we would get a push of hawks ahead of those little fronts. And eventually the main cold front hit in the afternoon and it, uh, had it gotten quite warm up to that point, and as soon as the cold front hit, it started, the uh, temperature really plummeted just, just immediately when that hit. We had a lot of sharp-shinned hawks migrating today, so here we have an adult sharpie up in the top right, and in the bottom left there is a barn swallow. This rusty blackbird was perched in a tree out in front of the hawk platform and then flew right over us. Here we have a juvenile sharp-shinned hawk, you can see that small head sort of a light vertical streaking on the breast lets us know it's a juvenile and a somewhat squared off tail tip because the tail feathers are all the same length. Here's a male wood duck looking pretty snazzy. Here's an adult sharp shinned hawk. Again, notice the same shape with a small head. It's got that long occipiter tail, but overall the bird looks more compact compared to the more lanky Cooper's hawk. It's got that more squared off tail tip because the tail feathers are the same length. And we know it's an adult because of the orange barring underneath and the uh, blue hood on the head. There were probably around 100 turkey vultures that had been perched on the west spit in the morning. And then at some point a bald eagle had flushed them and they moved over. Um, some of my friends were over in the owl woods and they saw them all go overhead there and they put back down. But once the day started to clear up, they uh, started flying again and migrated past. It's not the best photo in the world, but the real rarity of the day was this Swainson's hawk. And the bird is going away in an angle, so the head is actually down here at the bottom left, and this is the tail. So Swainson's hawks are a western species of Budio that we get, maybe not every year, but m most years we'll get maybe one here at the Braddock Bay Hawk Watch. And compared to our other Budios, they have really long pointed wings. And that's just the main thing that stands out about them. It's a bit of a different shape. They're um, bigger than the broad winged hawks that we're seeing this time of year. and just have those really long, lanky, pointed wings. And in some respects, they kind of look like an osprey. Sometimes when they're coming at you, they droop their wings kind of like an osprey does. But um, this was just a, a really nice bird to spot. Uh, it was over the parkway and fairly distant to the photos aren't great, but it did soar once or twice and we could see the dark flight feathers, which is another good field mark. And they also, um, if you get a close look, you can see they kind of have a bib on the upper breast as well. We had one sandhill crane migrate by today. Here's a group of four blue wing teals. So you can see these big blue patches on the top of the wing. Also notice the white crescents on the face. Here's another juvenile sharp-shinned hawk showing the same field marks as before. Here's another sharp-shinned hawk, and this one looks like it has a full crop, which is this bulge here, which means it has eaten recently. And it's kind of exaggerated because of the way that the feathers look like they're curving around it. Here's an adult sharp-shinned hawk, and this one also looks like it has a full crop. And again, the way the feathers are kind of hanging down there, it looks a bit exaggerated. Here's an adult red-tailed hawk. We see the dark patagial bars and the belly band. And it's an adult, so it has a dark trailing edge to the wing and a red tail. There were a lot of yellow-rumped warblers around today, both over at the east spit in the morning and flying over the hawk platform. And the one thing we can look for when they're flying over is this yellow patch in the wing pit area. 
Here we have a northern rough-winged swallow, which are completely brown on top. Here's an adult broad-winged hawk coming straight at us. Here's the same bird as it went by. So broad wings are kind of small, stocky beautios. The adults have this brown barring underneath, a dark trailing edge to the wing, and a tail that looks black with a single wide white band. Here's a juvenile bald eagle coming at us. And here's a juvenile bald eagle high overhead. So this gives you an idea of the overall silhouette of them. They have a fairly large headed appearance especially compared to golden eagles, which show a smaller head. And this one's in a glide posture, so it's really kind of got its wrists pushed forward, and it gives a somewhat angular look to the wing. We're starting to see more shorebirds. Here we have a Wilson snipe. Here's an osprey. Notice those really long, lanky, angular wings. Here's another shorebird. See a relatively small, kind of thin bill and legs that are sticking out behind. This is actually a lesser yellow legs. Here's another adult broad-winged hawk, and notice that when they're in this glide posture that usually the trailing edge of the wing is quite straight. Here's the first of two golden eagles we had today, both immature, so we see the white patches here in the wings, although they're not as apparent as it was in person, and a relatively small head compared to a long tail. Here's another adult red-tailed hawk, again, patagial bars and belly band, and adults have the dark trailing edge to the wing and a red tail. Here's another adult sharp-shinned hawk, and again, this one has a full crop, so it seems like the sharpies were eating pretty well today. Here's another red-tailed hawk, but this one's a juvenile, so again, we see those dark patagial bars in the shoulder area and the belly band, but no dark trailing edge to the wing and no red tail. Here's another juvenile bald eagle, so one born last year. You can see that even trailing edge to the wing because all of the feathers are the same age. Dark head and dark underside to the body. A lot of white in the wing pit area. Here we have a juvenile Cooper's hawk, and today uh, sharp shinned hawks outnumbered Cooper's hawks about 30 to 1. But this is a Cooper's hawk, so we see that kind of thin teardrop streaking that's more concentrated on the upper breast and not so much down here on the belly. And we see that the tail feathers, the outer ones, are shorter. And then as you get to the central ones, they're longer. So it gives the tail tip a bit of a rounded appearance. Here we have the top side of a juvenile golden eagle, which gave us an excellent view. We know it's a juvenile because it's relatively plain on top. It does not show the tawny bar that the other ages older than juvenile all show. You can see a nice white base to the tail as well. Also notice that golden nape, the back of the neck here, and that's where the golden eagle gets its name. Here's an underside look at the same bird. You can see the white patches in the wings here. Not the biggest I've ever seen, but just a really nice looking bird. And we spotted this one from quite a distance and it ended up coming right over us and soared around. Just gave us a really, really nice look. And again, notice that golden eagles have relatively small heads compared to a large tail, whereas bald eagles would show a larger head that's more even in size with the size of the tail. Here's a hawk that tried to sneak over, and we see that near the wingtips it has pale crescents. So this is actually a juvenile red-shouldered hawk, and it was the only one of the day. And in the final hours of the count, the number of broad-winged hawks started to pick up. Didn't have a huge day, only ended up with 700-some, but still some nice medium-sized groups that came through and some pretty nice looks as well. Taking a look at our eBird checklists, from the East Spit in the morning, we had 63 species. And from Braddock Bay Park, today I had 72 species. Looking at the hawk count report for our migrant raptor totals, today we had 388 turkey vultures, 2 osprey, 28 bald eagles, 17 northern harriers, 311 sharp-shinned hawks, 11 cooper's hawks. For beautios, we had 1 red-shouldered hawk, 764 broad-winged hawks, and 36 red-tailed hawks, plus the Swainson's hawk down here at the bottom. We had two golden eagles, and for falcons, we had 25 kestrels and one merlin for a total of 1,587 migrant raptors today. That brings the April total to 22,461, 
and the season total to 31,633. I got a number of new species for the season today. From the east spit in the morning, I had red-necked grebe, spotted sandpiper, and northern water thrush. And from Braddock Bay Park, the new species were Swainson's hawk and lesser yellow legs. Taking a look at the forecast, tomorrow's looking like a mix of sun and clouds with a slight chance of a rain shower. High around 50. The winds are starting out southwest in the early morning and then shifting more westerly and eventually northwest at 10 to 15 miles per hour. So overall, those are looking like decent conditions. Not terrible, but not huge. I would expect moderate migration. For Monday, it's looking mostly cloudy with a chance of a shower of rain or wet snow. High in the upper 40s, winds west-northwest at 10 to 15 miles per hour, so slightly less favorable just because of the cloud cover and chance of the shower, so expect light to moderate migration. And for Tuesday, looking at some sun in the morning with increasing clouds during the afternoon. High in the upper 40s, winds west-northwest at 10 to 15 miles per hour, so again, expect light to moderate migration. Well, we really weren't sure what to expect today. Looking at the forecast, um, it was talking about a lot of rain that really didn't end up happening. We had a couple of very brief periods of rain as the front moved in, and the steady rain didn't really start until around 6 o'clock in the evening. So um, we kind of lucked out, and we had a pretty good hawk flight, not just a steady sharp-shinned hawk flight, but also ended up getting a decent number of broad wings and just a really good variety overall. So Really nice surprise, and a fair number of people got to come out and see things like the Swainson's Hawk, or we had just that killer look at the Golden Eagle in the afternoon. So fun day to be out, and kind of uh, really when I went out this morning with that fog in the morning, I expected, okay, maybe we'll get a couple hours of the count in before the rain shuts us down, but they kept pushing back the rain, so ended up being a pretty fun day. And the next few days, maybe not quite the huge migration we've had the past few days but uh, westerly winds are decent for us and those are the winds that we stay at the hawk platform so looks like the next three days uh, we won't have a lake breeze and we'll be staying there at the platform in braddock bay park and i know tomorrow there's a field trip coming out at some point in the late morning so hopefully we have a decent day for everyone visiting from that group hope to see you soon from lyco birds this is david brown thanks for watching